Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast has evolved over the five plus years since it first launched. From now on, I'm going to be talking about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. And also mindset, of course, but mindset of all kinds, not just business mindset. I think. Things are changing for me, as you may have noticed if you've been following me online or listening to this podcast, so anything goes here. I hope you stay along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining us today, and now let's get into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 297. We are very close to approaching 300 episodes, and I'm super excited about that. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I am back this week with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about personal power. This is a topic that was inspired by a couple of things. First of all, a message that I received from a listener, and a chapter from my upcoming book, If Trees Could Talk. I'm really looking forward to exploring this with you in this episode. So, What are you going to learn today? We're going to talk about power. Is power good or bad? What is personal power and why we need it, or at least why I think we need it? I'm going to talk about how to cultivate a sense of personal power, both through mindset work and through practical action work. I'm also going to talk about what to do when we feel powerless, because I'm sure most of us have felt that way at some point or another, and I know I spent a big chunk of my life feeling very powerless. So this is a topic that really hits home to me, and I look forward to exploring it with you. Before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to remind you about Patreon. If you get value from this podcast, if it's something that you tune into every week and you feel like you've been getting useful stuff from this, I would love to have your support on Patreon. You can join from just $1 a month and you will get exclusive access to content that I don't share anywhere else. Plus, I offer done-for-you mindset work there, so you don't even need to show up for a, a call or a session, you just get stuff done for you. You can join me at patreon.com, that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash Holly Wharton and join me there. I would love to have your support. So this has been a really busy week for me, and I wanted to share some things that have been going on for me before I get into the meat of this episode. I have finally wrapped up the final draft for my book, If Trees Could Talk, Life Lessons from the Wisdom of the Woods. I've mentioned this book probably several times over the last year. It's something that I started in January of last year, and I just finished it this morning. You may have seen some posts online saying that I finished it a couple of weeks ago, and that was also kind of true. So writing a book has many different phases. So, you know, I write it, I finish the first draft, then I have to do my edits, then I send it to an editor, then I have to see what the editor said and and choose whether or not I accept or reject each individual comment. It was a lot of work, and I ended up adding a workcation weekend to my calendar last weekend because I knew that I needed the total focus that I get from a workcation in order to get this done. So actually, I ended up doing (laughs) some extra edits over the weekend on my workcation, which meant that the workcation weekend wasn't enough to get everything done. So when I came back from the workcation yesterday afternoon, did about three hours of work at home. This morning, I did another hour and a half, and I finally wrapped it up. And then I sent it to be formatted for ebook and print. I've also just arranged with my book cover designer to get the audiobook cover done, as well as the spine and the back cover for the book, and I hope to get those this week. And this week, I will be starting on the audiobook recording. I will be narrating my own audiobook. And I'm super, super, super excited about this because I've never done an audio version for any of my books before. I'm very excited to be doing the audiobook for this book. And I'm also very excited because I think based on my Gantt chart and my planning, I should have the audiobook ready to release 
about the same time as the ebook and print, which will be going live on Earth Day, which is April 23rd. It might be about a week later that the ebook is ready. That all depends on ACX and the other company they'll be using to distribute my audiobook. But the audiobook itself should be ready by that point. So I'm super excited because I think that this will get the book out to a wider audience because I know not everyone reads ebooks or print books. A lot of people prefer audio. And if you're listening to this podcast, it's quite possible that you prefer audio as well. Personally, I don't listen to audiobooks, mostly because I'm not really good at retaining information that I hear. I'm really good at getting my learning through reading, uh, not so much watching video, but definitely not audio. I'm not a very auditory learner. So I think that's probably at least part of the reason why I had never invested the time and money into having audiobooks done for my books. But I think from now on, that's going to be the standard. My plans for writing this year, I'm going to be looking at possibly writing a mindset book, not business mindset, but personal mindset. I don't know exactly what the book is going to be, but it's going to be kind of based on the concepts that I shared in some of my business mindset books, but focusing it more on personal mindset. And I might actually possibly base them around the topic of personal power because this is something that's really, really important to me. We shall see something mindset related that is not business mindset. I am also really excited because this year I will be releasing, well, I probably won't be released until next year, but I'll be working on a second edition of my, one of my, actually my first walking book, which is called Alone on the South Downs Way. And that was my first walking book that showcased my experience of my very first long distance trail, which is the South Downs Way, which runs a hundred miles from Winchester in the West to Eastbourne in the East. And I really enjoyed putting that book out there. I've received really great feedback from readers and also really bad feedback from readers. <laughs> that book is really, you either love it or hate it. And I think part of the dislike that people have for it is that it was such a difficult trail for me and I put all of that difficulty into the book. So what I want to do with this book is update the original edition, but also I'm walking the trail again a second time the first week in September. And I'm super excited about this because I really look forward to returning to this trail and experiencing the trail again, not just because I really loved that particular trail, but also because I have so much more experience in walking long distance trails. And I'm honestly curious to see how different it will be walking this trail with this experience and with the mindset that I have now, because I didn't have the right mindset and I didn't do any mindset work bizarrely when I was walking this trail. So I think it could have been much easier than it actually was if I had just stopped and done some mindset work along the way. We shall see. I'm really curious. So the idea is to update this book with the material from the first walk, adding the second walk, and then kind of comparing the two and showing people what it's like to walk the same trail with experience and without experience. We'll see how that goes. I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. So those are my plans for writing. Obviously, the tree book is coming out first. That's coming out next month. And then other books later this year, hopefully. So that's all for my writing. Let's get into this topic. So as I said, personal power, this was inspired by a couple of things. First, I received a message on Facebook from a listener, and it's a very personal message, so I don't want to read it, but I want to kind of share some keywords and concepts from it. So what this listener asked me to talk about was abuse of power. So she mentioned this person who is in a an authority position, who uses not just his body mass and physical size to intimidate other people, but also his language and his position as an authority figure. So she also says that she's seen this person do it not only with her and her family, 
but with coworkers and and other people. Um, this person mentioned that she's had to cut off a lot of people from her life recently and place firm, crystal clear boundaries. So I thought this was really, really interesting because again, I have experienced a lot of issues with personal power over my life. So abuse of power. Obviously, we can not control what other people say, think, or do, but we can control the people that are in our lives. So before talking about kind of flipping it on its head and talking about our own sense of personal power, let's talk about people who abuse their power. If you have people like this in your life, get rid of them. Um, I know that's easier said than done, but I really and truly believe that it's very, very important for us to pick and choose the people that we allow into our lives. And I've done a lot of research over the years on narcissistic people, because I had one of those in my life. And particularly, there's this really good subreddit called Just No Mother-in-Law. And it talks about mostly narcissistic mother-in-laws and family members who are terrible. Now, I have been really lucky in my life in that I was very gifted with two fantastic mother-in-laws or mothers-in-law, but there have been other people in my life that were narcissists, uh, one person in particular. And so I learned a lot by reading these stories, and I'll link to this in the show notes, I learned a lot from reading other people's stories on how they dealt with these situations of these people abusing their place in the family, their their own personal power, and how they learned how to set boundaries and deal with this stuff. And it really, it was very healing for me to read these stories and to read how people dealt with it because I realized just how difficult it is to be in a family or to be in a relationship with someone like that, it's so hard. And I think I criticized myself for a very long time for taking so long to get out of the relationship that was like this. It was one of the hardest decisions of my life. And I was so scared and it took me ages to actually do it. But I do believe that everything kind of happens in divine timing. And, you know, I couldn't do it before because I wasn't ready before. And when I was ready, I did it and it happened. So if anyone is in that situation currently, do not beat yourself up about where you're at. You need to take action at some point, And perhaps there's some work you need to do with yourself before then to make it easier. But yeah, it's going to happen when you are ready to make it happen. So flipping this on this on, on the head. So obviously, if you have someone who is abusing their power, if you have someone who is a narcissist, if you have someone who is mistreating you or your children or other family members, do what you can to remove this person from your life. If it's a boss, you know, try to find a better job, a different job. Um, if it's a family member, you know, sometimes you have to go no contact. If it is a partner, you know, divorce, split up, whatever. Do what you can to remove this person from your life. And that's pretty much all you can do because you can't affect, you can't change how someone behaves, how someone thinks, how someone talks, how someone treats you. So if you've got someone who is extremely horrible, get rid of them however you can. And do the work to help yourself. And how do you help yourself? Help yourself to cultivate personal power, to cultivate a deep sense of power, empowerment in yourself. Now, that's a big thing, and that's easier said than done. I know this because I felt very, very powerless for a very long time. And I feel like I've spent the last, you know, almost six years since I first started on this journey of mindset work, working on my sense of personal power. So, let's talk about power. What is power? Is it good or bad? I don't think the power, personally, is inherently good or bad. I think it just is. And it's, 
it's like an energy, it's a force, and it's how you use that power, whether you use it for good or whether you use it for bad. So according to Online Dictionary, power is the ability or capacity to do something or act in a particular way. The capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events. Authority that is given or delegated to a person or body. Political or social authority or control, especially that exercised by government. So, again, none of these definitions are necessarily good or bad, positive or negative. They're just kind of neutral. So, what is personal power? To me, personal power is like autonomy, it's your own sense of freedom and groundedness. And your sense of personal power, self-responsibility, taking responsibility for yourself and your actions and your thoughts and directing your life in the direction that you want to go and engaging with life and other people and things in the way that you want to. A lot of people will define personal power in the sense of personal power in relation to other people. So when I googled personal power, like what is it, definition, I got a lot of definitions that I didn't like. So for me, personal power is something that's very kind of interior, inside. It's, you know, all the things that I just said. But to other people, uh, let me read these. Personal power is a source of influence and authority a person has over her, his or her followers. Personal power is a source of Again, influence and power, influence over others, the source of which resides in the person instead of being vested by the position that he or she holds. Again, I don't like looking at it in terms of having influence over someone or something else. I think that personal power is something that comes from within and it guides our decisions, our actions, our thoughts. It's something that comes from within and is not necessarily used to influence other people. It can be used for that purpose, but not necessarily. So that's how I see personal power. That's where I'm coming from when I talk about personal power. That may be different to how you see personal power. It is certainly different to the way other people see personal power. So perhaps pause this right now and think about what is personal power to you? What does personal power mean to you? What's your definition of personal power? One of the chapters in my book, my upcoming book of Trees Could Talk, as I mentioned, um, has to do with personal power. It was a group of trees, a little grove of trees called the grandmothers, that's what they call themselves, who gave me this message from personal power. This is one of my favorite chapters in the book. And when the book comes out this month, I really, really hope that you let me know what you think of it, particularly this chapter. So what the grandmother said, and I'm going to quote just a small bit of this chapter. I don't want to read through the whole thing because it would be too extensive. What they said was, personal power is a feeling and it is multi-layered. It is not something that most people will achieve overnight. It is made up of the layers of self-trust Self-love, self-acceptance, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-value, self-worth. And it is the sense of all of these things being deeply grounded and connected with all the multiple layers of your being, your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, your superconscious mind. It is your everyday regular self connected with your higher self or soul or whatever it is that you personally choose to call it. I really, really love this definition of personal power because I think it's very aligned with the way I see personal power. It's something that comes from within And again, I'm going to repeat this. It's made up of all the layers of self-trust, self-love, self-acceptance, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-value, self-worth. I think the reason why, or part of the reason why this definition resonates so much with me is because of the heart-centered energy work that I do, which always starts with the heart center, no matter what topic we are working on transforming. Heart-centered energy work, when we're working on the heart center, we're focusing on 
the three layers of self-trust, self-love, and self-acceptance. So these are things that I have struggled with in my life, and these are things that I have really consciously worked to cultivate in my life. So this leads me to ask, how do we cultivate a sense of personal power? So like with everything else in my life, I tend to approach things in two ways, by doing mindset work and by doing practical action. So I often talk about the spiral staircase, moving up in our personal development, moving up in our sense of personal power by taking one step, which is the mindset work, one step, which is the practical action. And you keep taking those steps and you go up the staircase and you build and you cultivate a sense of personal power, a sense of groundedness, a sense of feeling strong and powerful in yourself. Again, what you choose to do with that power depends on what's important to you and how you want to use it. Let's hope that everyone listening to this will use it for the good. We'll use it for lifting up others rather than pushing down others. I'm going to assume if you're the kind of shitty person who likes to push down other people, you're not listening to this podcast. So let's assume we're all using our power for the good. I really love this topic. So how to cultivate a sense of personal power from the mindset perspective? Well, if you train in Psych-K, which is you know, as you know, the technique that I first trained in when I started doing mindset work, it's the technique that I've talked about a lot over the years of this podcast. One of the first things you do is you get a list in your basic workshop of belief statements, of goal statements that you can use to work on at home. And one of those categories is personal power. That's how important the concept of personal power is. So you get a list of belief statements that are things like, I accept my divine right to personal power and I express that power in everything I do. I speak my personal truths with love, passion, and commitment. I take the initiative to create my life the way I want it. And personal power is so important to me that I've included it in my business mindset book. So business beliefs, and business blocks, one of the 15 categories of beliefs and blocks is personal power. It's category number 11. So if you want to learn more about how to work on your beliefs using mindset work, mindset techniques, definitely check out this book. I think the important step is to identify, first of all, how do you feel? How powerful do you feel today? How do you experience your personal power or how do you not experience your personal power? In what ways do you feel powerful? In what ways do you not feel powerful? In what ways do you feel powerless? In what ways do you feel you could improve your sense of acting with power and acting with confidence in your life? I'm going to include some journal prompts for the Patreon community around this. So if you are a member of Patreon, you know, level $1 and above, you will get access to that. So again, ask yourself these questions. Try to get a very clear perspective on where you are right now in terms of personal power. What is your current level of personal power like for you? Is it weak? Is it strong? How is it? Once you know where you are, you can get an idea of where you want to be. So how would you like to feel in terms of personal power? If you had a strong, grounded sense of personal power, what would that look like to you? What would that sound like to you? What would that feel like to you? And how would you like to use that power in your life? Would you like to use it to create the lifestyle you want, to create the family that you want, to have the job or the business or the career that you want? What would you like to do with that personal power? What would you do if you had a more cultivated or stronger sense of personal power? How would your life be different if you had 
more power, more personal power in your life. And then do the mindset work, create the belief statements, do the energy work to change your beliefs around personal power. You also want to look at any fears you might have around personal power. So what are you afraid of? Like, do you think power is inherently bad? Are you afraid that if you develop your power, you might turn into a bad person? What's the worst that could happen if you developed a sense of personal power? What's the secondary gain? What are the benefits of staying where you are in terms of personal power? So look at the fears and then shift those fears, shift those blocks, shift those limiting beliefs around personal power. That is the basis of doing the mindset work on this. Look at what you need to believe in order to step into a place of personal power. What do you need to believe about yourself to be powerful in a good way? Who do you need to become to live a life of power? So that's the mindset stuff. These are kind of the same basic steps for any mindset topic. I've talked about this so many times, but it's basically get clear on where you are, get clear on where you want to be, get clear on what you need to believe to get there. And then do the mindset work. So that's it for mindset work. Now let's talk a little bit about practical actions. What practical actions can you take today, tomorrow, next week to improve your sense of personal power? So one of the practical actions obviously is doing the mindset work. Do it. And if you don't know how to do it, ask me. I am not trained, I am not a psyche instructor, so I cannot train you to do it, but I can direct you on how to find workshops in your area, or you can go to the psyche website, which I will link to in the show notes. Hopefully, one of the books that I want to work on is Heart-Centered Energy Work. So I really want to make that available to more people, and I will probably be doing that by writing a book about it. I don't know when that's going to happen, though. Possibly next year. I don't know. It's something that I want to do, but I feel like I need to get clear on certain things. And I think I need to download some other kind of levels of the work before I can make that available in that way. So if you don't know how to do mindset work, send me an email, ask me, and I will direct you to some places you can learn. So practical actions. Start out by making yourself a priority. I know a lot of people find it really hard to do that. You know, they make their partner a priority or their kids a priority. And that's not always good because if you're not taking care of yourself first, then you get stressed out, you get tired, you get burned out, and it's really hard for you to take care of anyone else. So by making yourself a priority and engaging in activities that you consider to be self-care, whether that's taking a few minutes to read a book or take a bath or, you know, go for a little walk or do little things that fill up your energy well and fill up your glass of energy water and make yourself feel better. Those are the things that you need to start doing because that is taking control of your life and choosing to do the things that make you feel good. Again, if this is difficult for you, start with five minutes. You can't say that you don't have five minutes a day. And if you think you don't have five minutes, then send me an email and we'll figure it out. But honestly, you've got five minutes, whether that's getting up five minutes earlier or going to bed five minutes later, but you can find five minutes in a day. Go to the bathroom, lock yourself in the bathroom at work where there are no kids and have like quiet five minutes. Um, I don't know. But Start making yourself a priority. Start engaging in self-care activities. I think that's a really important first step or second step or third step in building your sense of personal power because you are taking charge of your time and you're choosing to spend it on yourself and you're choosing to make yourself a priority. That is huge in and of itself. Next, 
and actually these are in random order. They're really not necessarily in one, two, three, four, five. Take responsibility for yourself. Take responsibility for your life. So if you're in a situation where maybe you've been feeling like you're the victim and you're feeling powerless, take responsibility for that because you made decisions in your life that got you to this place. When I was in a very terrible and very difficult relationship over a decade ago, I felt like the victim for a long time and I didn't know what to do and I didn't know how to get out of there. But looking back, I can see that I made very specific decisions in my life that got me into that shitty place. So this is not about blaming yourself. It's about two things. It's about not blaming others. And it's about taking responsibility for our own decisions in our own lives. So once you take responsibility for the shitty place that you're in, or the okay place you're in, or the not so great place you're in, however you choose to define it, once you take responsibility for that, then you can have the power to make different decisions to get yourself out of that place. That is super powerful. That's empowering. That is engaging your personal power to get yourself out of where you are and into the place that you want to be. And, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it's a result of making little steps but you've got to start by taking the first step. And the first step is taking responsibility for your own life and taking responsibility for where you are in life. That is super, super powerful. Next, know yourself. And maybe this was absolutely the number one step here. Maybe this should have been the first thing I mentioned, but here we are. Know yourself, like know who you are, know what's important to you, know what you want in life, know where you are in life, know where you want to be headed in life, know yourself. And if you go on my blog and look at, I'll link to this in the show notes, there's a whole category in my blog called um, Who Am I? And this is a really old series of blog posts from, I think, 2011 that looked at helping people to get clear on who they are. And this is something that I think I'm going to be revisiting. I want to write a book about this. This was way back when I first started thinking about writing a book, which was back in 2011. This is the book that I wanted to write. I wanted to write a book about what I called the three questions. Who am I? Where am I? And where am I going? This who am I question is the foundation question that we need to be asking ourselves constantly in life. Who am I? What's important to me? What do I want? So know yourself. Knowing yourself is, again, it's, it's a foundation in taking responsibility for yourself, taking responsibility for your life, and seeing yourself as an important person taking the time and space to get clear on who you are will absolutely help you develop your sense of personal power. Uh, next, I kind of covered this in the take responsibility thing, but stop being a victim. If you feel in any area of your life that you are a victim, that you are a victim of circumstances, that someone else is victimizing you, stop it. Obviously, it's okay to feel however you want to feel, but stop. That's not helping you. It's not serving you. Stop and take that situation and turn it on its head and see what you can do to get out of that situation. Now, quite probably, you're going to need professional help. When I left that really difficult relationship, I was seeing a therapist. I'm not a massive fan of therapy and talk therapy in particular. It's not served me a lot in the past. Um, but it did serve me very much in this particular situation. I only went for about five weeks. I made it very clear from the start that I did not want to get involved in a months and years long relationship. I wanted to deal with one specific topic. I think I had about five sessions, so five weekly sessions. I got what I needed to get and I moved on. It was very, very useful. So if you're in a really shitty situation, Get professional help however you can. Um, I know in some places it's covered by health insurance, in some places not. But do the research to get the help that you need. At the very least, get help from a friend, someone who can support you, someone who you know is supportive. But stop being a victim. And again, get the help that you need to get to make that happen. Because 
when you are in that victim mindset, and I know it's so hard to get out of, what, but when you're in that place, you're giving your power to someone else. And that's not good. So you need to take back that power, put it in yourself, and take the actions you need to take to turn your life around. Again, I totally know that's not as easy as it sounds, but it's something you've got to do if you want to take charge of your own life. Next, boundaries. And this is something that has also been so hard for me over my life. I think I've gotten really good at it, though. I think I'm really good with boundaries, but I used to be absolute shit at boundaries. I had no boundaries. Yeah, especially in that one particular relationship. And, oh, it was terrible. Like, I just... I had no boundaries. I was just like this amoeba floating through the world that had, I guess even amoebas have boundaries. So bad example. I don't know what I was. I was like a cloud floating through life that had no clear boundaries between me and anyone else. And I just let people walk all over me and it was really crappy. So set boundaries and boundaries will help you to develop your sense of personal power. Now, if you're in a bad relationship, or if you're the kind of person who has zero boundaries, start with something small, start with something easy. You know, sometimes setting boundaries is just as simple as saying no to something. And I know that's hard for people. That was super hard for me. The boundary muscle, the saying no muscle, they're muscles. You've got to grow them by practicing them. So start with stuff that's easy. Say no to something that's relatively easy to say no to or something that's not that big a deal and practice 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 you won't get better at that unless you practice and the more boundaries you have in your life and the more you take action to uphold those boundaries the stronger the sense of personal power you will have forgiveness is another thing that i wanted to talk about so a lot of people have problems with forgiveness. Because if someone's done shitty things to you, why would you want to forgive them? And I think the important thing here is that you don't forgive the other person, whomever they may be. You don't forgive them for their sake. You forgive them for your sake so that you're not burning up with this shitty feeling inside. And you don't even need to let the other person know that you've forgiven them. You can just silently in your mind and in your heart forgive the person. That's super powerful because again, you are taking charge of how you feel about this person, how you feel about this situation, and you are choosing to forgive. There are different ways of doing forgiveness work. Now, you might just simply make a personal silent statement that you forgive. Um, There's a Hawaiian spiritual thing, which I'm going to totally mispronounce, called Ho'oponopono. And I will link to that in the show notes because I probably mispronounced that. But that can be really useful in forgiving people. Um, There are different ways of doing that, but I will include a link in the show notes and you can Google it and figure it out for yourself how you want to use it. I find it really, really useful because I find forgiveness work to be really difficult sometimes. So the more we can use tools like this to help ourselves to forgive, the easier that will be. So I'm aware of the length of this podcast, but I also wanted to kind of bring this back to what the grandmother said in my book about personal power being made up of the layers of self-trust, self-love, self-acceptance, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-value, self-worth. So I will not link to them, but I'll include them in the show notes so that you can have that list. And work on these specific topics when you do your mindset work. Work on these specific topics when you are journaling, when you are taking practical action in your life. So do the things you need to do to increase your sense of self-trust. And there's a whole chapter on that in my book. Do what you need to do to increase your self-love, your self-acceptance, your self-esteem, self-confidence. Self-value and self-worth are super, super important. So important that, uh, again, those are a category of beliefs in my two books, Business Beliefs and Business Blocks. It's um, category 14, value and self-worth. It is so important for us to value ourselves, to really cultivate a sense of self-worth. I mean, 
this is something that has been a massive life lesson for me. I, and I'm still working on it, but I came from a space where my self-worth was absolutely terrible, 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 terrible. And I did not appreciate myself. I did not think I had anything of value, mostly because I was in a relationship with someone that t- basically told me I was horrible and worthless my, you know, from a better part of a decade, a decade, it was 10 years. Um, so after hearing you know, you're worthless, you're useless. I started to believe that about myself. And I have spent the last 10 years unpacking, unpicking, unraveling, and eliminating those beliefs about myself. It's been a massive, massive process. So I know, I know it's not as easy as to say, work on your self-worth, work on your value, but you got to do it. If you're dedicated to your personal growth and to your personal development and to living a happy life and to having a good life and to feeling good about yourself, this is super foundational work. So as with everything that I discussed today, I know this stuff is not do it once and you're done because I've been spending the last almost six years of my life working on this stuff. But to me, this is a very important part of life. Working on this stuff is super, super important. And the things that I talked about today as they related to personal power, God, I just think this is absolute foundational work that we all need to do with ourselves. These are core core beliefs, core aspects of ourselves. So I hope this episode was useful to you. I kind of feel like this was just scratching the surface. Maybe this will be a book. Maybe this will be the mindset book that I uh, mentioned earlier. I kind of feel like it should be. But that there are so many books that I want to write. So I don't know. I, I need more time and more more brain space. So if you would like to see a book on this topic, let me know. Like, I love hearing from you. So if you email me at holly at hollywarden.com or find me online and get in touch there, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear, you know, what things you want to hear about on this podcast, what things you would like me to write a book about. I also really want to get back into writing shorter books, like shorter eBooks or even paperbacks, but shorter books that are very concentrated around one topic and that just give you some actionable stuff to do and not a lot of, fl- well, I don't think my books have a lot of fluff in them, but you know what I mean? Like I don't want to write an extended book on a topic that I feel like could be really laser focused. So, you know, maybe this is an idea for a short book. I don't know. I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? What do you want to hear me talking and writing about? So thank you as usual for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon. And I would like to wrap up this episode with that quote from the grandmothers once again, because I just, I really love the energy of this chapter in the book, and I really love the energy of their message. So personal power, according to the grandmothers, is a feeling, and it is multi-layered. It is not something that most people will achieve overnight. It is made up of the layers of self-trust, self-love, self-acceptance, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-value, self-worth. And it is the sense of all of these things being deeply grounded and connected with all the multiple layers of your being, your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, your superconscious mind. It is your regular everyday self connected with your higher self or soul. And with that, I would like to say goodbye. Again, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to subscribe if you are not already subscribed. Next week's episode, I will be back with the fabulous Joe Casey. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 297 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed, at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Holly Wharton. 
Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.